when we have an acid-base balance, that means to say that there is a balance of the ratio between acids and bases. And that usually is 1 is to 20. There are two major systems that are responsible for maintaining acids in the body. Namely, they are the respiratory system and the kidney, which we would refer in this discussion as the metabolic component of acid bits. So you might be wondering, how does the respiratory system maintain or contribute to acid-base balance? Well, the respiratory system is one of the regulators of carbon dioxide in the body. And as we will soon find out, CO2 or the amount of carbon dioxide in the body actually is a great determinant for maintaining the amount of acids in the body because CO2 is a potential acid. Now, the next one is the kidney. How does the kidney maintain acid-base balance? Well, the kidney maintains acid-base balance by either reabsorbing sodium bicarbonate or bicarbonate as a buffer or eliminating excess acids when it's required. So as you can see, these two systems are going to be very important in maintaining acid-base balance. So let's talk a little bit about the concept of buffer. What is a buffer? When you think of a buffer as something that decreases the acidity of a solution, then that is exactly what a buffer is. So if we have excess acids in our body, what does the kidney do in order to maintain acid-base balance? It activates the buffer systems. And there are several buffer systems that are present in the body. And they are the carbonic acid bicarbonate system, the monohydrogen dihydrogen phosphate, plasma proteins, as well as hemoglobins are able to actually participate in decreasing the acidity of the solution. The buffer system is something that acts fast and it changes strong acids to weak acids. And that's the purpose of a buffer system. Now let's go into a deeper discussion on the role of the respiratory system in acid beds. How does the respiratory system affect acid-base balance? How is this possible? Well, it's possible because of the fact that it has the ability to control the amount of carbon dioxide that a patient will have. So there's a question over here. If a patient has a decreased breathing, what happens to your carbon dioxide in your arterial blood? It's going to increase and therefore, the amount of carbon dioxide is going to be related to how much the patient is breathing as well as the quality of that breathing of that patient. So having said that, what medical conditions are most likely to cause acid-base imbalance resulting from respiratory incompetency or alterations, COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases, but any time, actually, that there's an alteration of the respiratory rate as well as the respiratory depth, there's going to be an alteration in acid-base balance. As an example, supposing now that you're very anxious and you start <laughs> breathing so rapidly, what is going to happen to your carbon dioxide? Decrease, because you're going to blow off that carbon dioxide. That underscores the importance of the respiratory system in maintaining acid-base balance. If the patient does not breathe enough, for example, the patient is only breathing 12 times per minute, you are going to have a consequential increase in carbon dioxide. If the patient is breathing very fast, then it's most likely, therefore, that the patient's carbon dioxide is going to decrease. So let's take this into an application in the clinical setting. Supposing now that you have a patient, for example, that is having a fever. And because of the fever, what's going to happen to respiratory rate? The respiratory rate is going to increase. So if it increases, what do you expect the PCO2 or the carbon dioxide in the arterial blood to be? So you have another patient who is not breathing well and is just 
of a very, very shallow breath, what do you expect the PCO2 to be? The PCO2 will be increased because the depth of the respiration and the rate of the respiration has been decreased. So what have I said so far? I have emphasized the fact that the PCO2, which is a function of the respiratory system, is going to be determinant of acid-base balance. And the reason is that carbon dioxide is a potential acid. The more carbon dioxide there is going to be, the more potential for acid formation. So how in the world is that possible? Well, the reason is because, as you could see, carbon dioxide is present in our lungs. Water is also present. And the combination of the two has the potential for forming carbonic acid. And in turn, carbonic acid could also dissociate into hydrogen ions and bicarbonate. One of the most important concepts that you have to remember is that hydrogen is the one that determines the acidity of a solution. The more hydrogen there is going to be, the more acidic the solution is going to be. That explains the role of the lungs in maintaining acid-base balance. So let's now go to the other system. The other system being the renal, which we call in acid-base balance, the metabolic component of acid base. So what does the kidney do? The kidney can potentially reabsorb and conserve bicarbonate if it is needed. Let me say now that if you have an increase in CO2, that is as a result of the lungs being unable to eliminate carbon dioxide efficiently, what can the kidneys do? Well, the kidneys can conserve bicarbonate. Bicarbonate is a buffer. What did we say a buffer is? A buffer is something that makes a strong acid less acidic. And therefore, when you have an increase in carbon dioxide because of pulmonary incompetence, the kidneys in turn will save bicarbonate. Now, what would happen if we have a decrease in carbon dioxide? What can the kidney do to compensate. It would eliminate the bicarbonate. And so you would either eliminate the bicarbonate in order to maintain the acid-base balance. In cases of kidney failure, oh, what's going to happen? You're going to have an inability to correct acid-base abnormalities. So patients with renal dysfunction will have a challenge as far as maintaining acid-base balance. That is the conclusion of the first part of our lecture.